everyone. Today I'm going to show you how I prepare my own homemade sauerkraut. Um, this is something that my grandmother, my great great grandmother made. Uh, we don't add anything special to it. It's super simple. I avoid dishes that you know, tend to have a lot of ingredients. So the simpler, the better, the tastier, and kids love to eat it that way too. So we're going to need about one sauerkraut cabbage. It's called kraut cabbage for some reason different but it's a different kind of cabbage and it has it's more dense and it has a different flavor and then we use either two big carrots or four uh, thinner ones I like it a little bit sweeter and since this since this cabbage is a lot bigger I'm gonna use about six of them we're gonna grate it real thin and then we're gonna mix it with shredded cabbage and also we're gonna need some pure sea salt um, I've also used Himalayan pink salt in the, in the past that came out uh, very, very good too. So whatever you guys have. So first we're going to slice the cabbage in half. First I remove all the big green leaves that were kind of outer leaves and they were rough and dirty. Some of them were already going bad so I just cleaned it up washed it then I'm gonna slice it in quarters so it'll be easier to handle see how different this is from regular cabbage it's very very dense it it even tastes different and I like this time of the year because this is the only time of the year where when you can find it sometimes in our local stores not everybody have it but when they do I sure make sure that I grab about two or three heads of cabbage and then I just use like these big pots to put everything in there um, it's gonna start letting a lot of juice out once you add some salt so make sure it's all covered in its own juice I do not add any vinegar any sugar I don't add water um, and if you go to the store and you try to find something natural, it's really hard to find natural sauerkraut without vinegar being added to that and uh, uh, it doesn't taste the same. Just because they make it in large batches, they want to make sure that um, there's no mold growing, so they have to add vinegar. And sometimes for taste, they add like organic sugar or something. So I'm going to separate it in smaller portions and I'm going to start shredding it by hand like this. I'm going to first put it in this bowl over here. It will be easier to mix it before I transfer it in a, big, in a bigger pot. You can also, if it fits in a glass container or if you have a glass container that's big enough, this is the only one that I have that's big enough, you can also use glass container, which I prefer over these because that way you have to come up with something heavy to put on top, make sure that it stays down. Once it starts letting all the gases out, it's going to rise up to the top, so you need to make sure that you have either a plate on top of it with a jar of water to just kind of keep it down or um, some people use like large rock that they put on top of the plate so that's good too whatever you can come up with so as you can see I shredded only half of this cabbage um, that's how much my bowl is going to sit in and I shredded three of my carrots on a thin shredder thinner one instead of this one so we're gonna add everything together and we're gonna add some salt uh, it'll be easier to mix it I don't want to add any more at this point we're gonna do it in half portion I use about a good tablespoon or two salt you don't want it too salty but if it's not salty enough that's not gonna be good either so uh, let's see one, one and a half 
This is a little bit smaller than tablespoon, so. And we're gonna make sure we mix it thoroughly. And we're gonna let it sit for another like 10 minutes until it lets all the juices out so that we can stuff it in the jar. And we're gonna leave it on the kitchen counter in a warm place for about three, three days. If you like it crunchy, it'll be ready on the fourth day. As you can see, this is really, really simple. We only have three ingredients here. I don't add anything else. You can also experiment with garlic, adding uh, celery, maybe bell peppers. I know people add um, raisins, golden raisins, regular raisins. That's good too. Um, I just make it simple just because my kids don't eat anything else in here. <laughs> so, and that's how my grandma used to make it. We grew up in Ukraine and um, during that time we didn't even have supermarkets. So it was really hard to get um, uh, something like raisins. It was super expensive. Uh, celery wasn't even available to us. So it was just mostly like potatoes beets, everything that you add to borscht. Uh, by the way, that's another link on my uh, channel that you can check out and see how we make borscht. Uh, so it's just simple, everyday ingredients that we cook with. And um, I think that's where it all came from. But if you like to add some spices, like um, maybe some greens, like dill weed or parsley, you, you can experiment with that as well. Maybe some jalapeno if you like it spicy, that'll work too. Um, but this is kind of basic, simple base recipe. So it's been about 15 minutes. Um, I had time to shred the rest of the cabbage, which you can see in this part. Um, so you see how, um, how much cabbage we have here. It started letting the juice out pretty juicy. We're going to start stuffing the jar or whatever dish you have on hand. Make sure you guys wash everything very thoroughly, including your hands and your nails. So use a special nail brush. Make sure that you don't get any kind of other bacteria in here so that it's not going to get moldy. Make sure you use everything that's sterile and clean. I like to rinse it off with baking soda and hot water. So, and as I go, I just press down on each layer real, real tight. It will help to get the most juice out. Make sure that all of our cabbage and carrots are covered in juice. Spread it around like that. Make sure you don't have any big clumps in there. Make sure you have salt. Spread thoroughly. You'll see more juice coming out as it sits in the jar. It's just easier to work with it once it becomes a little bit softer and instead of trying to stuff the jar right after you shred it. We're going to have more juice from the rest of the cabbage, so it will be good. I'm going to pour everything in here. And you guys can also add some uh, yellow onions and a little bit of oil, and you have a salad ready if you just want to eat it like that. It's also good. Uh, we didn't add like green onions. I remember we always added uh, yellow onions. Um, just something that 
uh, we had access to. There was no way we could get green onions in the winter time. So most of the time, what we used to do, uh, whether you use it fresh or fermented, this is what it's going to look like when it's already fermented. Um, and you put it in the refrigerator and let it sit there. So this is the finished product here. You can eat it just like that, or if you like to use it as a salad, I usually add a little bit of sunflower oil along with yellow onions, or you can use green onions, whichever. Yellow onions, I think, taste a lot better with sunflower oil. And then just mix it together and serve. That's all. So um, I'm going to mix the other half, and I'm going to add to this jar. Um, the convenient part about this glass container that I have is because it has dispensers. So if you were to use it for like medicinal purposes, you can always like um, get a little bit of juice out in the morning and just, you know, tablespoon is good enough. Just get a tablespoon of juice out and just drink it on an empty stomach. So without trying to flip the entire jar over, you just get tablespoon of juice. <laughs> so you'll see how much juice it gets as it sits a little bit longer on the kitchen counter. So I stuffed the other half of the cabbage in here along with carrots. Look how, look how much juice I'm getting. And it's going to be a lot more in just a little bit. My whole hand is sinking in. So as it sits on the kitchen counter, I completely forgot to tell you guys, the first day it's going to be fine, and the second and third it's going to start releasing all these gases, and it's going to stink like there is no tomorrow. It is not the most pleasant smell that you would expect from a sauerkraut. Do not throw it away. In just a few days it will disappear, and it's going to be totally delicious after you get rid of all the gases um, it'll have totally different smell totally different taste and you're actually going to love it anyways I had a friend that had like huge two batches of sauerkraut that she made the same way I'm making it right now and so she did it in a large white bucket um, and put them on the kitchen counter and so I asked her three days later how's your sauerkraut and she said, oh, I threw it away. I'm like, all of it? What happened? And she's like, yeah, I threw it away. It stunk so bad. I must have done something wrong. And she couldn't believe that <laughs> this is how the process goes. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, you didn't. I couldn't believe she did that. But then again, if you never saw anybody do it, if you never um, experienced anything like that, <laughs> then of course it's really hard to understand. So I'm warning you right now, there will be unpleasant smell in the next couple of days. Do not throw it away, it's totally fine. Just press down on it like that a couple times a day. I do it in the morning when I get up, wash your hands, press down on it, and then do it the same thing like in the evening. Just to release all the air and make sure it's all covered again and all the juices and it'll go sour. So I will put, um, paper towel on top along with rubber band to make sure all of the fruit flies are staying out because there's not that many of them the weather is kind of cold so I felt some relief on that but they still there's still a few flying around so I'm gonna put um, a paper towel on top like that because we don't want to cover and we need oxygen uh, to make sure you have oxygen otherwise it's not gonna ferment it's gonna start rotting um, you can write a date and time. Uh, on the third day, um, I'm going to try it. If I like it, if it's sour enough, I'm going to put a lid on it and put it in a refrigerator. You can store this for up to half a year, sometimes even a year. Um, this wouldn't last my family very long, so I'm not worried about it. But this is how long you can store it in your refrigerator. So good luck and enjoy.